Archaeology, Wikipedia article audio. Archaeology, a portmanteau of architecture and ecology, is a field of creating architectural design principles for very densely populated, ecologically low-impact human habitats. The concept has been primarily popularized, and the term itself coined, by architect Paolo Soleri. It also appears in science fiction. Authors such as Peter Hamilton in Neutronium Alchemist or Paolo Bacigalupi in The Water Knife explicitly use archaeologies as part of their scenarios. Archaeologies are often portrayed in science fiction as self-contained or economically self-sufficient. Development Similar real-world projects these structures have been largely hypothetical insofar as no archaeology, even one envisioned by Soleri himself, has yet been completed, but he posited that a completed archaeology would provide space for a variety of residential, commercial and agricultural facilities while minimizing individual human environmental impact. An archaeology is distinguished from a merely large building in that it is designed to lessen the impact of human habitation on any given ecosystem. It could be self-sustainable, employing all or most of its own available resources for a comfortable life, power, climate control, food production, air and water conservation and purification, sewage treatment, etc. An archaeology is designed to make it possible to supply those items for a large population. An archaeology would supply and maintain its own municipal or urban infrastructures in order to operate and connect with other urban environments apart from its own. Archaeology was proposed to reduce human impact on natural resources. Archaeology designs might apply conventional building and civil engineering techniques in very large, but practical projects in order to achieve pedestrian economies of scale that have proven, post-automobile, to be difficult to achieve in other ways. Frank Lloyd Wright proposed an early version called Broad Acre City although, in contrast to an archaeology, Wright's idea is comparatively two-dimensional and depends on a road network. Wright's plan described transportation, agriculture, and commerce systems that would support an economy. Critics said that Wright's solution failed to account for population growth, and assumed a more rigid democracy than the USA actually has. Buckminster Fuller proposed the Old Man River City project, a domed city with a capacity of 125,000, as a solution to the housing problems in East St. Louis, Illinois. In popular culture, Paolo Soleri proposed later solutions, and coined the term archaeology. Soleri describes ways of compacting city structures in three dimensions to combat two-dimensional urban sprawl to economize on transportation and other energy uses. Like Wright, Soleri proposed changes in transportation, agriculture, and commerce. Soleri explored reductions in resource consumption and duplication, land reclamation, he also proposed to eliminate most private transportation. He advocated for greater frugality and favored greater use of shared social resources, including public transit. Arcasanti is an experimental archaeology prototype a demonstration project under construction in central Arizona. Designed by Paolo Soleri, its primary purpose is to demonstrate Soleri's personal designs his application of principles of archaeology to create a pedestrian-friendly urban form. Many cities in the world have proposed projects adhering to the design principles of the archaeology concept, like Tokyo and Dongtan near Shanghai. The Dongtan project may have collapsed, and it failed to open for the Shanghai World Expo in 2010.
certain urban projects reflect arcologi principles. Pedestrian connection systems often provide a wide range of goods and services in a single structure. Some examples include the Plus 15 system in downtown Calgary, Montreal's RESO, the Minneapolis Skyway system, the windscreen in Vermont, Quebec, and the Houston, Texas tunnel system. They include supermarkets, malls, and entertainment complexes. The Plus 15 is the world's most extensive skywalk, at 16 kilometers in total length. Minneapolis has the longest single path, at 13 kilometers. Seward's success, Alaska was never built, but would have been a small city just outside Anchorage. Chicago has a sizable tunnel system known as the Chicago Pedway connecting a portion of the buildings in the Chicago Loop. The Las Vegas Strip has many archaeology features to protect people from the 45 degrees Celsius heat. Many major casinos are connected by tunnels, footbridges, and monorails. It is possible to travel from Mandalay Bay at the south end of the Strip to the Las Vegas Convention Center, three miles to the north, without using streets. In many cases, it is possible to travel between several different casinos without ever going outdoors. It is possible to live in this complex without need to venture outside, except the Strip has not generally been considered self-sustainable. Soleri did not advocate for enclosed cities, although he did sketch a design and build a model of an archaeology for outer space. The Toronto downtown area features an underground pedestrian network, PATH. Multiple high-rises are connected by a series of underground tunnels. It is possible to live in this complex without needing to venture outside, but the PATH network is not self-sustaining. The total network spans 28 km. McMurdo Station of the United States Antarctic Program and other scientific research stations on the continent of Antarctica resemble the popular conception of an archaeology as a technologically advanced, relatively self-sufficient human community. The Antarctic Research Base provides living and entertainment amenities for roughly 3,000 staff who visit each year. Its remoteness and the measures needed to protect its population from the harsh environment give it an insular character. The station is not self-sufficient The U.S. military delivers 30,000 cubic meters of fuel and 5 kilotons of supplies and equipment yearly through its Operation Deep Freeze resupply effort but it is isolated from conventional support networks. The base generates electricity with its own power plant and grows fruits and vegetables in a hydroponic greenhouse when resupply is non-existent. Under international treaty, it must avoid damage to the surrounding ecosystem. Crystal Island is a proposed archaeology in Moscow, Russia. In 2009, construction was postponed indefinitely due to the global economic crisis. The Bijic Towers operates like a small-scale archaeology encompassing nearly all of the population of Whittier, Alaska. The pair of buildings contains residential housing as well as a school, grocery, and municipal offices. Whittier once boasted a second structure known as the Buckner Building. The Buckner Building still stands but was deemed unfit for habitation after the 1969 earthquake. Most proposals to build real archaeologies have failed due to financial, structural, or conceptual shortcomings. Archaeologies are therefore found primarily in fictional works. Notes Further reading Usage of Archaeology vs. Hyperstructure one of the earliest examples in literature is William Hope Hodgson's 1912 horror-slash-fantasy novel The Nightland, 
where the last remnants of humanity survive in two enormous self-contained metal pyramids, another significant example is the 1981 novel Oath of Fealty by Larry Niven and Jerry Pornell, in which a segment of the population of Los Angeles has moved into an archaeology. The plot examines the social changes that result, both inside and outside the archaeology. Thus the archaeology is not just a plot device but a subject of critique, in Robert Silverberg's The World Inside, most of the global population of 750 billion lives inside giant skyscrapers, called urbmans, each of which urbman contains hundreds of thousands of people. The urbmans are arranged in constellations. Each urban is divided into neighborhoods of 40 or so floors. All the needs of the inhabitants are provided inside the building food is grown outside and brought into the building so the idea of going outside is heretical and can be a sign of madness. The book examines human life when the population density is extremely high. The Maxi's computer game SimCity 2000 allows the construction of four different types of archaeologies in the future, introducing a wider audience to the concept. Solari, Paolo Archaeologi, The City in the Image of Man 1969 Cambridge, Massachusetts MIT Press Archaeologi.com, Archaeologi, Sculptors Wiki Archaeology, Review of Shadowrun, Renraku Archaeology, Floating Archaeology A Design to Prevent Against Rising Sea Levels.